Hi, my name is Van Fan. I'm here at Peer Storage, and today we're going to talk about asynchronous replication. So in today's organizations, everyone wants to protect their data. There's multiple ways of protecting data. So we have a few of them up here. The first one is snapshots. So snapshots is to protect from human error, accidental data deletion, or even ransomware. You have the second method is for backups, which is more of a long-term archival type of protection. And then you have data replication, which is to protect from a disaster uh, power outage, for example. All right, so we're going to show you now how Pure Storage does it with our solution. And we have two sites here, site A and site B. And we have some host, some volumes, and we're going to replicate from site A to site B. And this is just one example, but there are many topologies that we can support. So the first thing to do is the two arrays would have to be connected over the WAN because it's two different sites, so you'd be connected over the network. So here we'll connect site A into the WAN and site B. And once they ping and they can see each other, we can establish a relationship for replication. Now, the next step is to actually choose those volumes to replicate from one side to the other. So let's just say we have uh, site A here, and we'll just first show which hosts are connected to which volumes and show some examples of how we would choose the volumes to replicate over. So for example, I have host number one here, and let's just say host number one is connected to these two volumes. And I have host two and three. So for a real world example, let's say two and three was a cluster, an ESX cluster, for example. So we have, a, we have an ES, ESX cluster. And what we do is we have a mechanism that's called a host group that allows you to manage both hosts in the same way. So it's an easier function to say, hey, I want to do something to these two hosts, but I can do it to the host group versus doing it individually to the host inside. So for example, let's say I have this host group and I want to connect this one single volume to both of those hosts. Instead, I can say I want to connect it to the host group and automatically it'll connect that volume to both hosts because in clustering you need to connect the same volume to the same host. And so for example, now we'll say uh, I want to have this volume to uh, this host group as well. So by connecting it to the host group, this one will be autom automatically added. And last uh, one, the last volume, we'll just leave it there and, uh, and go from here. All right, so now we're ready to replicate because we know which volumes. Let's go ahead and choose the volumes now. So we have this concept of a protection group. So I'll give this a little square to illustrate this. A protection group is simply just a logical grouping of volumes that you want to go and have them replicate together, a, a consistency group. So if I say I wanted to put this volume into my protection group, I can say choose that and it'll be a single volume going into this protection group. I can add more volumes if I wanted. So I can even say, hey, I want this host to be in my protection group. So by saying that host, it's going to really say I want these two volumes that are connected to that host. And so by virtue of selecting that host, I'm going to actually put those volumes in there. And I can even say the host group. Right, so that host group has these two volumes. So we'll also do that here. All right, so now I have my volumes in my protection group. So we'll call this a P group. And you can have multiple P groups, multiple uh, groups with multiple schedules. So you can manage them, manage them separately. So now we have our protection group, and the first thing the array is going to do is take a snapshot. So I'm going to illustrate with one of the volumes, just keep it simple. It'll be a snapshot, which is essentially just a bunch of pointers back to the base volume. So what we're going to do is do our initial sync, which is a full sync. So this volume is going to be sent across to this side. And when we're replicating the first full sync, it's not actually every single bit because what we're doing is sending data that is compressed. We're also sending data that has the pattern removed. And 
Lastly, we are sending data that has been deduped. Peer Storage is famous for its data reduction technology. So what we're doing is sending as little amount of data as possible. So with dedupe, what we're doing is we are sending data between the arrays, but we're also sending metadata between the arrays. So it knows only unique data needs to be sent across. So what that results in is faster sync. Everyone wants that. Also, lower bandwidth requirements, and that results in lower cost for this bandwidth between the two arrays. Now, so once you have the replication going across and the full sync is there, so we'll show that by this snapshot being on this side, what happens when time goes by? Well, customers can choose to have periodic resyncs. So for example, let's say this was done at noon, and at one o'clock they wanted to sync up their data again. So we'll show that by taking another snapshot, that's what the array would do, and this is at one o'clock. And what the array will do is take these two snapshots, it'll do a comparison, and only send over the delta across to the other side. So again, what that means is we're only sending the last block that has been changed. We're not sending everything in between. Again, that results in a lower bandwidth requirement and again, lower cost. Now, to go full circle, what happens when a disaster occurs or when power goes out to site A? So in site A, presumably, you're not gonna have any connection to it because everything is down. So the user would just go to site B and say, hey, I wanna bring up site B. So they have their snapshot here. All they do is click a button and say, okay, I wanna take this snapshot. I wanna copy it over to a base volume now. It's an instantaneous copy because it's all a bunch of pointers back to the full data here on the snapshot anyways. And they say, okay, have my copy, I want to send it back up to my host, and now this host has access to the same data on this side, and applications can continue, and users can have business continuity. So at this point, you see the replication go from one side to the other, a failover, and now what happens if this site comes back up and they want to send data back to site A? So simple enough, just like the way we did it before, we'll take this volume, put it into a P group, and only the delta data that was written from this host would be sent back over to the other side and resync it back to the original volumes. So hopefully you can see this is very straightforward, very simple. Everything is built within the peer arrays. There's no extra hardware, no extra software to manage. Uh, it's very efficient because we're using peer storage's data reduction technology that it's famous for. It's flexible. Here we're only showing a single direction, one-to-one -one topology, but we have multiple topologies, multiple modes. We can do synchronous as well as asynchronous. So with synchronous, you can do active cluster. And then lastly, it is free, so why not go ahead and protect your data? All right, thanks for watching.